What's up, everybody? Welcome in to the Pot of That Nature post game report card. Following Arkansas's 34 to 10 loss to LSU, I'm Curtis Wilkerson. He's Andrew Ellis with Inside Arkansas. Um, you've heard our post game show by now. That's where we just go live immediately following games, and we just kind of let uh, kind of let the fans get some stuff off their chest. Sometimes that's uh, that's a good thing. Sometimes it's not, uh, given the result. And then we did our post game accountability session where we just kind of take a look back at everything that we talked about pregame, the keys for Arkansas, challenges we issue, bold predictions. We hold ourselves accountable for the things we say. Now's the report card where we really get into the weeds and kind of dive into uh, to kind of grading out these positions one by one. Uh, and I've been looking forward to this, Andrew. I don't know about you, but, uh, you know, big picture. It was not an A performance for the Razorbacks by any stretch. No, it was not, Curtis. And, uh, you know, you, you know, when you're a student, you were a better student than I was, I would imagine. So maybe you didn't experience this as much. But, you know, when you take some of those tests and you're like, I feel like the teacher wanted us to fail. And, you know, yeah. and like you're, she, she, you know, that she's kind of cocky as she's handing out, passing back the papers, C, D, C, F, D, you know, and like you're, she kind of like, you're like, man, she wanted us to fail. Curtis, as the teacher today, I did not want the Razorbacks to fail. <laughs> I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. We felt like we had provided a study guide. We felt like there was, you know, we, we, we had given them what they needed. We gave them the tools to succeed. Uh, and, uh, they just did not succeed during this test. And so, we will have to grade them a little bit harshly, which uh, we do not take any pleasure in doing. And I say that like unironically, like we genuinely like it would be a lot more fun. Like after the Tennessee game, when we were like, A, A minus, A plus, yeah. you, a, you know, you like every, we were trying to give the entire defense an A plus. I, we would much rather do that. That was a much more fun show to do. Uh, we were not we were not really dreading it the way that we kind of were this morning. But uh, here we are, Curtis. I'm ready to hand out some grades. And again, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. That's right. Yeah. Egg laid last night by Arkansas. Opportunity missed. Um, man, I, I would like to say that the final score was not indicative of the game, but honestly, it kind of was because that would have been one where I think if Arkansas would have wound up losing, you know, by a touchdown or something, then I probably would have been like, oh, that was uh, that was maybe closer than it should have been. I think is how I felt about it. The mm -hmm. fact that uh, that LSU was able to tack some on late in that game and make it a 24 point difference. I kind of feel like, yeah, well. Given what I watched, it feels about right. So anyway, let's uh, let's start with quarterback. We always do, and I usually go first. I want to let you go first, but uh, just to roll through Taylor Green's stats real quick. Uh, he did play. He looked healthy. I thought was moving around pretty good back there. But uh, twenty-one to thirty-one passing, two hundred thirty-nine yards, a touchdown, a very very uh, consequential pick. But sixty-eight percent completions. Um, run game was not a, a thing for him in this one. Six attempts minus 10 yards. He was sacked three times, but I uh, did not have a rush over seven yards in this game. What say you about Mr. Taylor Green? So I'm going to start with the critiques because <clears throat> I'll be honest with you, Curtis. I really don't have a ton of like harsh criticism for Taylor in particular. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and obviously, whenever your offense only scores 10 points, I'm not going to bend over backwards to give the quarterback too much credit here yeah um, and i'm not gonna i'm gonna try to avoid doing that here but i'll start with the criticisms though i i said coming into the game that i thought that my bold prediction was taylor green was gonna have 75 rushing yards uh south carolina's quarterback lenora sellers really busted up uh the lsu defense in the run game he had 88 on 10 carries by the way yeah yeah and I thought there was kind of a path to that being the case. And we all we all kind of wondered about Taylor Green's health. And I got to be honest with you, I thought he looked pretty healthy. And I do want to give him credit because he didn't shy away from contact. He didn't look like he was second-guessing himself or super ginger there on his legs. Like, I felt like he we got the full, like, the 100% the Taylor Green experience. Um, cause, so credit to Arkansas not lying on their injury report. Um, I thought that he his legs, there were a moment, he had a few scrambles there. I think you read it off there in our uh, accountability report. He had, like, three actual carries for 14 yards. Uh, and then obviously the three sacks brought him back to negative in the rushing department. Um, I was a little bit disappointed that he wasn't able to get going in the run game. I don't know if that was more just, I mean, there weren't any, there were maybe one or two designed run plays that involved Taylor Green. So I don't know if it's really much I can knock him for, but I guess I was surprised by that. Um, and Sam Pittman talked about how they felt like they could attack the LSU secondary. Uh, they wanted to get the quick passing game going. And in the first half, Taylor Green was really effective at doing that. I think he was eight of nine for his first uh, first nine passing attempts. Um, so he came out really sharp, 
was uh, converting third downs, was making throws that he needed to, a lot of throws over the middle, uh, and kind of finding his matchups and doing a good job. He was decisive with the football in the first half. And I really thought that, honestly, it's, it's it was really a tale of two halves for the entire game a little mm-hmm. bit. In the first half, I, I would have said Taylor Green played about as well as he could have. I thought he was doing a really good job getting the ball out quick. He also did a good job identifying when the pressure was coming and when he needed to get the ball out quick, and he felt like he had answers there. And then as the second half wore on, it felt like Arkansas's receivers failed to get open a ton for him. The pass rush started to heat up. He started to get a little bit happy feet back there. His yep. decision-making got a little bit worse. It wasn't a bad performance by Taylor Green. It really wasn't. Uh, I would even argue he was like almost pretty good in the game. I'm going to go, and this is very generous. This is just very generous. I'm sure you have a different grade. I'm going B-, minus, mostly because I don't really know what all I can critique him on. The the, the interception, and I know that you know as a 6'6 quarterback, it's really tough to get your pass batted down in such a big spot. Uh, So maybe that maybe is going to push him closer to the C-plus range. Um, but I felt like overall, like on a throw for throw basis, play for play, I felt like he, he was tailing green. He gave Arkansas a chance to win. Uh, he made some plays, he made some nice throws. He was pretty decisive in the first half. Um, you know, not great. I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell my grandkids about this performance, but I thought he was okay. (laughs) Yeah. Um, his, the, the touchdown drive, Arkansas's only touchdown drive of the game. I thought he was excellent on that one. I'm just looking at the play by play and, uh, you know, tailing green, uh, pass left complete seven yards to Jaquin and Jackson. Uh, Taylor Green passed short up the middle. Tyrone Broden, uh, Green scrambles right for seven. Green scrambles right for two. Uh, Taylor short pass up the middle. Ten yards to Sustania. Fourteen yards to Broden. Twenty-five yards to Armstrong. Like he was just kind of dotting it, and he was responsible for most of that. Uh, and it was at that point where I thought, okay, now this offense is really going to get humming. And then they just never really did after that. Um, you mentioned just kind of like the the tell of two halves aspect of it uh, for Taylor Green there, and I would. Uh, you know, like I would, I would probably agree with that. That's about right. I mean, if you look at, uh, you know, just some of the the passing numbers. Let's see, he was uh, two of three in the first quarter, nine of thirteen in the second, uh, seven of ten in the third, and and three of five in the fourth. So, you know, just uh, there just wasn't as much there. Total yardage was uh, was down, obviously, in the second half. Here's my thing. Uh, yeah, the interception. That's just man. It, that's just tough because they whiffed on a block there. Like the guy never should have been in the position to make that play, but he yeah. was. Um, but yeah, just, I don't know. You're in, you're under duress there. You're backed up by your own end zone. Um, throw that thing anywhere, except right at the dude's hands. Who's coming at you. And then just kind of tapping it back up there in the air for him to go ahead and complete the interception was a choice, uh, but whatever, you know, um, at the end of the day for me though, you are commanding an offense that picked up 277 yards against LSU. You scored 10 points against LSU, and this is one of the worst defenses in the SEC, um, and there are a lot of factors that go into that, but it's like, the for me, the buck kind of stops with you. Um, I thought he was pretty good passing the ball, but I have to take the big picture thing into account when when everything kind of starts with you. I'm going C, um, but I do agree with you from the standpoint of like, this wasn't a game where I thought he missed a bunch of throws. It wasn't a game where I thought he made a bunch of poor decisions. You're right. He did kind of get happy feet in the second half there. Um, but, man, like you have to be the catalyst for this offense. You have to help them lead and finish drives. And at the end of the third quarter, and I'll, I'll talk about something else Sam Pittman said, but he was asked, like, how are you guys going to get back into this? And he said, well, our quarterback's going to have to get us back into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he didn't do that in this game. So, um Again, not a wasn't a bad performance. I don't think by him wasn't a great performance, and that might be what they needed. I do want to see him get going on the ground. Uh, say what you want about his knee. I thought he was moving <laughs> fine, uh, but for Taylor Green to have negative rushing yards combined over the course of the last three games, that's a problem, man. They got to figure it out. And and there's a bigger indictment, I think, on this run game and SEC play that we'll talk about a little later. Um, but yeah, you know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't argue with the with a B minus. I told you before this, I was going to be a little bit harsher on uh, on the offense in particular, just because of the big picture. I just can't get over the lack of production. Well, I'm not going to argue with your C, really. Like I did, like you know, it's not really like I don't. I don't. I'm not going to defend him too much. Honestly, I feel like C C plus is kind of like I think we maybe landed on the right one. Or like I had a B minus, you had a C. I think C plus might just be like the, the right. compromise where it's like you know what, he was fine. <laughs> yeah, um, running backs. This one was this one was tricky for me because 
I don't know that they were really given a chance. Like I don't, in a way, I want to give them like a D or an F, but like the running backs themselves aren't calling the plays. Like they can't hand themselves the ball. Uh, and that was the biggest thing that was just a, a head scratcher to me. And I didn't think Sam Pittman had very good answers for it. Uh, but Arkansas as a team rushes 19 times for 38 yards in this game. Uh, that's two yards per carry for those who uh, who struggle with math. Um, that's that's not good. That That's just not going to get it done. Um, they didn't only abandon the run. They never really tried to establish it. Uh, they did not hand off to a running back on back-to-back -back plays the entire game. I don't know. Um, Jaquinnon Jackson, five rushes for 26 yards. He was very clearly hurt coming into the game and during the game and, and basically every time he touched it. Um, hate that for him. I know it's frustrating for fans. I'm sure it's very, very frustrating for him. Uh, but man, you just you got to get him healthy. Um, and if that means he's got to sit out for a little bit to get that way, so be it. I was hoping to see something a little bit different after the bye week, but uh, my goodness, like you can't keep you can't keep doing this. They didn't go to Braylon Russell. I thought he was in line to get more carries coming out of the bye. He had three for three yards. Um, R Dub had four for fifteen and a tough fumble there. That was it. I mean, that's all you got out of these guys. So um I don't I don't I don't know. Like I don't want to hang it too much on them, but they didn't do anything either. Whatever. You had 277 total yards and 10 points. I'm going D. Okay, I'm glad I'm going D as well, Curtis. Okay. Um now look, we don't injury shame on this podcast. That's no. not what we do. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to like hold it against Jaquin and Jackson that he's been banged up, you know a lot of the year and was banged up in this game and wasn't really able to compete, but the best av ability, Curtis, as they say is availability. And he was not available, uh, which, which is tough. And it was a, it was a big deal for this Arkansas offense. And frankly, I'm kind of the guy, you know, as an NFL fan, uh, you know, the NFL has figured out that running backs are like useless that you could pretty much get any random big, strong guy and he can run the ball. And so it's like, it, it's kind of shifted in football where yeah. our running backs as valuable as they used to be. This was a game where I think you could make a real argument you can see how valuable Jaquinta Jackson is because he had the five carries for 26 yards. He also had the one reception for seven yards. That's six touches, 33 yards, a little over five a pop. Man, if you could have gotten 20 to 25 of those, your offense feels completely different. Your entire, the way you're attacking this team, hey, maybe we wouldn't be as hard as we're going to be on the O-line in a little bit because Jaquinta would have been making, it would have kind of been masking some of their deficiencies, which I feel like that's what Jaquinta Jackson does is mask some deficiencies of this offensive line. That's what he was doing early in the year when he was leading the SEC in running or in rushing. I think it would have been nice. To, I really just, we'll never know, obviously, but it would have been nice to see what would it have looked like if Jaquinta had 23 touches in this game. Mm -hmm. I would imagine he probably would have found a way to get 100, 125, 150 yards uh, and we'll just never know because he was he was banged up throughout the game. And uh, Braylon Russell, he had only the three carries. You obviously would have liked to see them go to him more. Uh, he was also very ineffective in those carries and couldn't get to the edge against their linebackers, which, like, you know, LSU's got a good front. Like, no no disrespect or anything, but I felt like he was ineffective. R-Dub had one of the worst fumbles uh, of the season, which, by the way, is like one, it's, it's tough when it's a fumble that they don't even have to review or even think about reviewing. Yeah. Where it's like you fumbled standing up. It's like it wasn't like we're going to the ground and it's just someone hit you and you fumbled. Um, and, it, and again, it came like you, you mentioned earlier on the post game. Uh, it came after a long LSU drive where Arkansas got a stop to make it 10 to nothing. Uh, I say to make it 10 to nothing to hold them to a field goal. Mm -hmm. And you're like, OK, now this offense can finally kind of catch their breath. You kind of wanted like you said, you wanted to see Jaquin and Jackson there. They go to R Dub and he fumbles. That was a massive play in the game. And it, again, when there's a small sample size of stuff for us to grade, and we've got three ineffective carries from Braylon Russell, one god awful fumble from R Dub, who actually made a couple nice little plays down the stretch and made a couple garbage time receptions or whatever. Yeah. Um, there's not much to grade, but what I saw wasn't great. The only guy that I don't have any complaints with is Jaquin and Jackson, who wasn't available. Um, and so Definitely. ultimately, I'm I, I'm going with the D as well. It's a little bit more on you know you could probably blame the coaching staff or whatever, but uh, yeah. in these post game report cards, we uh we we let the players face the music and uh, they are facing the music and we're giving them a D. Exactly. Um, I am I'm concerned about Arkansas's rushing attack. I couldn't sleep last night, so I I wound up writing about this at like 1 a.m. But I want to share a few stats with you coming into this game on Saturday. Uh, Arkansas ranked fourth in the SEC in rushing. They were just a tick under 200 yards per game. Uh, they got 38, so obviously fell well short of that. Uh, but LSU came in here uh, 13th in the SEC in total rush defense and 14th in yards per carry allowed. Uh, and, and Arkansas got two yards per carry against these guys. Um, but you look at it, the numbers are deceiving with Arkansas's rushing attack. Like They feast on UAPB. 
and UAB and Oklahoma State. Uh, but if you look at it in the SEC, um, let's see, Arkansas entered the game already ranked next to last in SEC only rushing at 140 yards per game. But after Saturday's loss, Arkansas is averaging 114.5 rushing yards per game and just 3.2 yards per carry against SEC opponents. Uh, that ain't going to get it done. And so you look at it and it's like, oh, they are a top five rushing offense in the SEC, top 25 in the country. No, no, they're really not. Um, and, and it shows with Taylor Green, who was averaging 80 yards a game rushing in non-conference games and SEC only games. Uh, he's under 80 total through four games. So uh, they have to get some things figured out. We've talked so much about um, this offensive line, which we'll get into in a minute, uh, struggling in pass pro, being really good in run blocking. Are they? <laughs> Are they? And uh, and what's really going on here? So they got some stuff to figure out. It's really been Taylor Green's passing that's kind of had the offense going the last couple games. Yeah, and I mean, you know, the the two games that have really been the like where you sound the alarms on Arkansas's rush offense were the A and M game and the LSU game. What was the common denominator there? Jaquin and Jackson combined for 15 carries in those two games. Yeah, uh, I think what we've seen is when Jaquin and Jackson is is healthy and able to carry the ball, he kind of elevates this group. And I think early in the season, especially when they were facing lower competition, he was really able to elevate it. Um, and again, I'm glad you mentioned the fact that. Arkansas's offensive stats are extremely deceiving. They had 700 yards of offense against UAPB. They had 650 yards of offense against Oklahoma State, who mm -hmm. clearly sucks. Uh, I think they're not even going to make a bowl game. Uh, UAB, I'm sure they had like 450 yards in that game too. The further we get away from those games, the worse this offense looks. That sample size is growing, and you're getting actual games in there. And I understand, like, every every team in the country plays some cupcakes. So I'm not saying, hey, let's just look at the stats and take away everyone's cupcakes. But for this Arkansas team in particular, the, the difference is stark. It's a very stark contrast uh, between what they were doing in non-con versus what they're doing in SEC play. It's time to kind of let's just come to terms with the fact that this Arkansas offense is just not a great unit at all. Uh, they're a below average unit and their run game at this point is one of the worst in the SEC, which really I did not see coming at all. No, no, I didn't see that either. And, uh, you know, the 19 carries for Arkansas in this game, it's uh, coming into play. They're averaging 41 rushing attempts per game. So that's less than half of what they normally average, just in terms of, of pure attempts. So. Yeah, you don't believe us that we think Arkansas's run game sucks? The coaches believe it. I mean, they, yeah. they abandoned it real quick. I mean, they, they don't even think it's good. Yeah, that was insane, man. I would encourage anybody. I should have clipped it, but I would encourage anybody to go back and listen to uh, to Sam Pittman's press conference if you want to get really irritated at some answers as to why they uh, – they didn't run the football in this game. So anyway, um, let's go to wide receiver. We do skill positions. We finish with the line. So uh, wide receivers, honestly, um, I don't know. It's uh, yeah, it, it, it's your turn to go. Um, so we'll, we'll try to go back and forth here. So carry on. But that was maybe the one group where I was like, eh, you know, not too shabby. I mean, one Arkansas's best player, the most consistent player on this team, uh, Andrew Armstrong, he plays wide receiver. He showed up. He had almost 100 yards. He got in the end zone for the first time. He Thank continues you. to be one of the best receivers in the SEC. He's probably going to find himself on an all-SEC team if all uh, goes according to plan down the stretch. No notes. I don't have anything to complain about with him. He's a stud. Uh, mm -hmm. Satania had the horrible fumble, which we have to – I mean, that's going to account in this in this game. Even though it was yeah. inconsequential, what are we going to do? I mean, we got we to gotta take that into account. Shout-out to Tyrone Broden. And I say that unironically, Curtis. I know. Made a few, made a few huge grabs. Made that really weird grab where he looked like he bobbled it, and he like told the ref, "Like, hey, no, 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 I caught that sucker." Yeah. Turned out he did. He made another nice, really nice grab on the sideline. Got the toe down. They got uh, called back because of a penalty. Um, ah, yes. But it was a hell of a catch. Like that was his best play of the game. He didn't get credit for it because I looked at it and I was like, "Wait, uh, three receptions for twenty four yards? What the hell?" Mm -hmm. uh, but then uh, he had the one right there that would have given him. He probably been like four for forty or something. But yeah, that was a hell of a grab. He also drew the targeting, which got called back, uh, which got picked up and was not called targeting. But Tyron Broden was involved in that. I thought yeah. he did a nice job. And Satania made a couple of nice plays. I think he had one of their 25. He and Andrew Armstrong both had a 25-yard reception. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, overall, like, I thought the receivers played pretty well. I mean, it's, it's hard to uh, give them too high of a grade whenever down the stretch it felt like they couldn't get open. Uh, but overall, with Andrew Armstrong's performance, with a nice little uh, Britain, I don't want to say breakout on a 24-yard game from Tyrone Broden. Uh, Curtis, I'm gonna give him. I'm gonna give him a B, B or B minus is kind of where I'm at. 
nothing great, nothing crazy, but I mean, you almost had a hundred yard receiver and uh, it felt like the only success Arkansas had in, in on offense was targeting these receivers over the middle. For sure. Um, yeah, I'm I'm going C plus just because I went into this saying there's I'm not going any higher than that, yeah. given what the offense did big picture. But I agree. Like, I, I thought there were a lot of things to be, I guess, encouraged by um, it. It was, I thought, telling that at the end of the third quarter mentioned uh, what Sam Pittman was saying about Taylor Green, which is, hey, like he's he's going to have to get us back in this game. But they were kind of asking him, like, what's what's going on right now? And he was just saying, well, we can't get open. We're not getting open. Our guys aren't getting open. Um you should be able to get open against LSU's defensive backs. And they were early and, and they weren't later on for whatever reason. Um, but whatever. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't have anything to add to what you said because I, I think you nailed all of it. Uh, great stuff as always from Mr. Consens- uh, consistency and Armstrong Broden. Nice to see him actually make some catches and not have some of those weird uh, drops or just weird, like miscommunication things with Taylor green. Maybe that's a thing in the past now. Uh, Satania nice. Okay, fine. Um, I'll go C plus for them. Tight ends. Um, and you know, Luke has showed a pulse. He had two, uh, two targets, two receptions on one drive. That was it. Um, but it was nice to see him get a couple things there. Uh, Oski's back. He played five snaps. Um, they weren't great in, uh, in the blocking game, whatever. See, yeah. Just like, I don't, I don't have anything to add. (laughs) That's a C for the tight ends. They're always the one that like, we have no, real criteria to grade them on because it's like they're just not a big part of what this team does tight ends are not very featured (laughs) exactly um offensive line yeah we need to have some discussion here about this um i'm not grading them very well at all i don't think um i don't know man like you you had to abandon the run against lsu because your your coach said you weren't having success Mm -hmm. with it uh you had 38 rushing yards in this game you you missed a block that directly led to the killer interception that was an LSU touchdown I thought they were holding their own in the first half kind of fell apart in the second half and protection um they just allowed third down sacks at such an alarming level uh yeah I don't know man and then and I know we need to talk about this you move Blackstock from right tackle to left guard you move Harris from left guard out to right tackle and I don't want to say experiment failed because it was one game but the the opening sample size was not promising because they were your two uh, worst rated offensive lineman in this game by a wide margin and just some staggeringly low blocking grades. Um, mm, I don't know, man. I Yeah, I mean, but to be fair, pretty consistent because those have been the two lowest graded offensive linemen the entire year. It appears, yes. it, appears it does not matter which uh, which position. They're just they're just not a very good, uh, very good duo there. Um, yeah, if we're going off of just the PFF overall offensive grades, they got a, a 51 for Blackstock, a 64.2 for Nichols, a 37.8 for Harris, a 62.0 for Carmona, and a 66.3 for our coworker Josh Braun. Uh, who is <laughs> who is like? It's so funny that like the offensive line all year, you're like, oh man, struggle, struggle. Oh hey, Carmona, he's pretty good. Josh Braun, he's okay. That's been like the constants. Uh, the the right guard, right tackle, and left guard has been bad all year. The center's been pretty below average all year. Braun's been okay. Carmona's been above average. Like that's pretty much what this offensive line is. They are who they are at this point, man. And uh, you know, you read the numbers there of what they've been doing in SEC play. We got to stop giving them that credit of like, oh no, they're actually good in the run game and bad against the uh, you know in pass protection. If if you look at PFF, they're actually better in pass protection. At least some of these guys. I mean, Carmona, yeah. Carmona slick is like one of the better pass protecting left tackles in the SEC. Uh, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have the SEC numbers pulled up, but like he's grading out pretty well in pass pro, but there's just weak spots in this offensive line that teams are able to exploit. I'm going to go D plus for my grade, Curtis, simply because I thought they did hold up pretty well in the first half, but that plus is doing like, that's, that's, that's a very generous plus. I'm definitely not going to give them above that. I think that my D plus is probably pretty generous, but uh, yeah, not a great performance from the offensive line. Actually, I'm downgrading it to D because I just can't believe they weren't able to get a push in the run game against this LSU team. Yeah, that's crazy, man. I, I had a D as well. Um, if if I was to give an F, and I decided not to today, um, it would have probably gone there. And and the reason I didn't is for what you said. Like I thought they held their, <clears throat> held their own pretty well there in the first half, but man, uh, they have to figure some things out there. Sam Pittman made sure to mention that Kudis is healthy and will factor into things moving forward. Um, we'll see what that means. I have no idea. Like if he's ready uh, to be plugged back in at guard or whatever, I'm cool with that. And then I don't know if you have a, a battle at that point between 
Blackstock and Harris out at tackle. I, I don't know what that would look like, but I am to the point where, you know, even a couple weeks ago, I was like, yeah, but Kudis has missed so, missed so much time. Like, I don't know if you want to disrupt what they've got going on. Maybe they're going to take a step forward. Uh, but this offense is in such a – it's just a struggle bus right now to where I'm kind of open to any possibilities, if I'm being honest. Yeah, definitely. I mean, look, I don't I don't see there being an overnight fix. I, I can't even I, – I think Patrick Kudis, you can make an argument he's the most talented and best offensive lineman they have. Even that, I just don't – I mean, I think if Frank Ragnow were playing center for this team, I still think it would be a very below-average unit. Uh, so I don't think there's going to be an overnight fix. But, yeah, they've uh, they should try whatever they think might work. I mean, they tried something in this game. We'll throw Kudis back in there, see if that works. But uh, I do not, I'm do. i not optimistic that it's just going to magically become a good unit overnight. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, moving on to the mm. defense, this is interesting. The defensive line, uh, just as I look at the PFF grades, I pulled them up, and, and the highest defensive uh, grades went to uh, Cameron Ball, so a defensive tackle. He had Larry Worth in there, but then Eric Gregory, another defensive tackle. Um the two interior guys that might surprise me a little bit, given that LSU kind of ran all over them, which is not something they typically do. So um, I, I don't know. That kind of surprised me at any rate. Um, let's see. You know, they didn't get home, but uh, they did get some pressure on Nussmeyer. I thought for about a quarter and a half there, they were really getting after him. Landon Jackson, I thought was, uh, was giving that tackle hell for LSU. Um, I think he had four. It was a damn good tackle. Will Campbell's really good. Uh, yeah, man. And he had yeah. four pressures on him. Yeah, and he he got a hit, didn't get a sack, but um, he was in he was impacting things there. I thought, I mean, like even Nico, um, I see Quincy Rhodes back there, maybe once. I mean, they, they got back there a little bit. Uh, it wasn't consistent, and then the longer we got into the game, and you mentioned this, like it just started to really dissipate. Um, but I don't know, man. You just allowed allowed a pretty pedestrian run blocking unit to to pave a pretty steady path on the ground. Um, and then like congratulations on the horseshoes, you know, credit there for close, but no cigar in terms of getting the Nussmeyer. Um, I don't, I don't know, man. C minus. I, I don't know. I was, I was kind of teetering between C minus and C. Yeah. Um, the PFF grade surprised me as well. So Cam ball is like one of his best games of the year, yeah, uh, which is a good sign. Cause I mean, he's coming off of his best game of the year against Tennessee. Uh, good to see that guy starting to emerge as the competition rises. We love Cam Ball, man. We think he's got a chance to be a really good player for Arkansas, uh, mm -hmm. and we'll see what he's, he looks like next year. I think he's got a chance to to play at the next level. I really do. Uh, Landon Jackson obviously has a chance to play at the next level, and he actually played pretty well in this game, I thought. Uh, and again, I, like I mentioned, he Will Will Campbell, he was giving him hell, man, four pressures. But again, this, this ain't horseshoes. Um, and so, yeah, I uh, overall, I think C-minus is probably the right way just because, like you said, <laughs> that run game was really able to assert themselves. And that's just something if, if you're letting LSU do that, it really makes me think you're not going to be able to slow down many rushing attacks. Yeah. Like I really wonder what Ole Miss might run the ball for like 300 yards on this team. Uh, like really that's it's, it's concerning. Um, and so we'll see if they, if they're, they shore that up. And again, this, it's kind of goes back to the running back thing where you can blame the coaching staff or you can blame the depth because it's not necessarily Landon Jackson's fault that he has to play 71 snaps. Uh, it's not cam ball's fault that he's got to play the entire game, but that carries into the grade and they got worse throughout the game, which makes sense when you're playing a lot and you're forced to play a ton of snaps. But what are we supposed to do if we're not evaluating the game? And so, yes, yeah, C minus, I feel like is, uh, is probably about, about right. Yeah, and I I think I'm curious to see what you think about this. I might be about in that same range here with the linebackers. This is probably the first game in a while that I haven't been really impressed with that group. And uh, you know, I think coming into this, it was you know that LSU is going to pass. They're probably going to pick up some yards, you know, from that aspect. But uh, you can't let them get going in the rushing attack too. Like if LSU is able to run the ball effectively, uh, they're going to win most of their games just because they're so good through the air. Um, and a lot of that goes on onto the linebackers being able to finish in the holes. Um, and then especially if I see that, you know, Cam Ball and Eric Gregory were apparently so solid up front, it's like, well, what was really going on there? Well, then you look at it, um, you know, Brad Spence plays 25 snaps. He doesn't record a tackle. And it's like, okay, you can't just be out there getting cardio, bud. Like this is a, this is a deal where you've got to be able to make some plays and uh, we're still waiting for him to kind of, I don't know, take that next step. Uh, Xavier and Sori, he plays uh, 79 snaps in this game, which is a lot. Uh, but this is one where he struggled to get a 31.3 tackling grade. They credit him with uh, with three missed tackles there. So not his best day at the office. 
Uh, Steven Dix, I thought was fine, but didn't necessarily pop like we see in some of these games. Um, just, I don't, just not their best. And when you got a guy like Durham uh, rushing for over 100 yards on you with an LSU team that just doesn't really do that, eh, I, I can't be too optimistic about that performance. Curtis, I think I'm going D+. Plus. And uh, I gave them an A plus for the Tennessee game. I thought Arkansas's linebackers like really affected that game. Like they flashed on the screen, and I felt like they did a good job. Uh, they allowed the one big fifty yard run against Tennessee, but in the run game, I thought they did a really good job of forcing the issue for hitting the running back behind the line of scrimmage. It felt like their running backs were able to get ahead of steam, which you yeah. can blame on the defensive line a little bit. And I mean, look, there's plenty of blame to go around. Uh, but uh, you just waited, like, you just waited for any of those linebackers to really make a play. And I know Sorry had nine tackles, but it's like tackling a guy seven yards downfield is not making a play. That's simply right. just making a tackle, and that's your job to do. Uh, there, it just you. There's nothing, no action behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, they weren't getting in those passing lanes either. Which, like, it, when Arkansas's doing the rush three, drop eight thing, uh, how many times back in the day when they would do that, the Barry Odom thing, would you see Grant Morgan or Hayden Henry or somebody come away with a pick, come away with a bat down or something like that, knock away a pass? Uh, they were nowhere to be found, really anywhere, unless it was seven, eight yards downfield. Again, I just felt like they were just kind of out there. I was not impressed at all, man. I was really disappointed because I felt like they had a chance to kind of dominate this matchup, frankly, because we didn't yeah. think else you could run the ball. Um, so I thought that, like, again, we a part of these grades, at least the way I view it, is what do I expect from you? Yes. And I expect very big things from this linebacker group because they've been pretty good all year. They've been one of the bright spots of the team. Uh, I thought it was a huge step back for them in this one. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I'm with you, man. Uh, defensive backs, I had a I had a hard time with this one for a couple of reasons. Um, I, I thought they did a good job keeping things in front of them. Like they did not get burned with the home run ball uh, in this game, which is something at LSU. I mean, they they do that to teams. They've got really good receivers. Uh, honestly, if you go look at the stats, like Nussmeyer, he threw for what two hundred and twenty six yards. I think you uh, you take that man. He's averaging like three thirty a game. So uh, from that standpoint, good. They kept things in front of them. Uh, good. Uh, you know, looking at uh, looking at the coverage grades, we got it's rough on the grades. The, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It kind of is. Um, you know, like Marquise Robinson, for example. I know early on, I text you and I was like, dude, he has no chance against Lacey out there because mm -hmm. he's getting picked on early. But you look at it at the end of the game, he was targeted ten times, which I would target Lacey ten times too. Uh, gave up six receptions for fifty three yards, but I did think he kind of tightened up. Um, I'll take that. I'll be honest with you. I, I yeah, will take that. No doubt. Um, Nico Slaughter got him, uh, nine targets, seven receptions, uh, Hudson Clark, buddy. He, yeah, I, we, I've seen enough of him in coverage since he's been back. Uh, yeah, he, I mean, he should have given up a touchdown on that one, but I think yes. Nussar kind of like double pumped a little bit, but yeah, he, I mean, pretty much should have given up a touchdown there. Yeah. So he, he struggled a little bit. I, again, I'm surprised Singletary, uh, wasn't targeted more than he was, but we know he had that PI in the end zone and. Uh, you know, they were getting the best of him four receptions on five targets, but I think it was a little bit, uh, I don't know, more amplified than that. Uh, and so like, there were some good things that they did. There were some struggles there, but then I also think about, you know, Arkansas's bend, but don't break philosophy in this game. Uh, but like we said in the accountability session, there came a time where it was like, okay, um, this offense just isn't going to figure it out. The defense has to make a play. And they had opportunities to do that, and they weren't able to capitalize on, uh, frankly, some a few bad balls that Nussmeyer threw. And uh, if you're getting hit in the hands, uh, you got to come up with one of those. I think the announcer even said that, like, "Hey, if they're if they're throwing it at you, like, eventually you got to catch one uh, and and make this guy pay for a mistake." And Arkansas wasn't able to do that, and so it, it kind of goes both ways. In Pittman's talk about the turnovers, where it's like, if we don't turn the ball over, if we're equal to our opponent. We feel like we can win games. Well, if you're going to turn it over three damn times, you got to at least come up with a takeaway or two. Um, and I realize those are difficult things to do, but they had opportunities and didn't cash in. Um, I, I'm so back, I, I, like there's, I'm so high and low on certain things. That I'm, I think I'm just going to go right in the middle and go see. I'm going to go see minus Curtis, and hmm. I think I, I kind of am with you. Where like I agree with everything that you said. Where it's like. Certainly was not a good performance from this defensive back unit, uh, and I think there was there was opportunities for them to do more uh, that they just didn't take advantage of. There were a couple passes in particular where I'm like, someone's got to pick that off. That ball's oh, fluttering man. up there, and yeah. you got two dudes on one receiver. Someone go up there and make a play, uh, and you know they just didn't do a ton. The reason I'm not going to be too harsh on them one is because what do you expect of them? 
Uh, I don't I don't have super high expectations for them. They're still missing their best cornerback, uh, and they've done a pretty good job for the most part, kind of not making that be a massive issue. And you're going up against one of the best, I mean, a top 10 passing game in the entire country, mm-hmm. which takes into account. So that's why I'm not going to be like super harsh on this. Uh, and I could actually be talked into a C uh, like you went. Um, ultimately, you know, they did make a ton of plays, but ultimately they kept like, again, I thought their deficiencies were more by design almost. Mm-hmm. I feel like that Arkansas was deliberately trying to keep everything in front of them. Yeah. Uh, they did a pretty good job for the most part. Uh, TJ Metcalf was what well, just wasn't targeted. It's kind of crazy. I don't know how that happened that he was not targeted once in coverage. Uh, but yeah, Danico Slaughter has become like the guy that by the end of the year, dude, his his targets like he's going to be targeted like seventy eight times in coverage or something like that. Like teams just know uh, that's the guy they need to find. Uh, and LSU has guys that can that can take advantage of those mismatches. Ultimately, there were a few just like third and five, third and sixes where they were allowing less uh, guys to get open. And it's just like, man, you really need to stop right there. Again, just never really made plays, but ultimately like it's hard for me to grade them too harshly considering what they were up against and what we really expected of them. Again, if you, if, if we took every, if we took their performance and everything else in this game, went according to script, we would be living with it. We'd be like, okay, that's fine. Arkansas stopped the run. They kept everything in front of them in the past game. They established the run on offense, but those other factors not being there, made the defensive backs performance look worse. If that makes sense to me, to y'all. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I I think that makes perfect sense, man. Uh, Special teams. Okay. (laughs) Devin Bale, Devin Bale, really good. I mean, it just, He's really good, man. <laughs> Sam Pittman was right about that. Listen, Devin Bell is good now. He kicked that. I, I do. He does his thing. So obviously, he had the one, the the punt against A and M, where it went sideways and went out of bounds of the one. When he punted the ball, that that ended up getting down at the two yard line. Which shout out to the review, which showed that it was a flawless punt. Mm. Could not have been closer without being in there. Um, when he first punted it, I was like, oh man, he hit that way too hard. Like that's going to go into the end zone. Like I, I was like, dude, that's a line drive. But he put that weird little funky English on it. Yeah, gets it down at the two, man. Like that's as good as you can ask for. He also had another punt that, uh, weirdly enough, the the returner stepped out of bounds, and had he not stepped out of bounds, he would have ended up getting tackled at like the sixteen because he like caught it and was like running back. Um, yeah, I mean he had three punts for an average fifty point seven, had a fifty eight yarder, had one inside the twenty, uh, and one that was right at the twenty. I mean, really good stuff from Devin Bale. Uh, the I don't think they had any kickoffs returned, right? No. And they didn't return it. I mean, did they, they even force a punt? Uh, one punt, <laughs> one thirty-four yard punt from LSU. Um, you know, and then one for two on the field goals. That's really it. Yeah, one for two on the field goals, and it's just like I don't know. You miss the forty-two yarder, you make the fifty-one yarder. It, they're just you can't trust the kicking game. You just can't. No trust consistency, it. man. Which is None. what you want in the kicking game. Exactly. Yeah, they're. I mean, they're teetering around fifty percent on the year. That's just. That's just not good enough, man. Especially no. when a team is struggling to score. Like you, you have to be able to get three at least. And you but, can't get inside the twenty for the entire yeah. game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on, man. And so there was that. Also, I don't know if you noticed this or not, but after I think it was after LSU went up twenty-four to ten. I think that was it, or it might have been the next one. Anyway, uh, the ensuing kickoff, like Arkansas just kind of ran away from it, and it was like, oh, it's going to yes. go into the end zone or whatever. That was almost like a 99-yard onside kick for a they touchdown. Yeah, like the nose of the ball hits the goal line. Uh, that could have been major, major error. If you're going to – you better make damn well sure that ball is going in the end zone if yeah. you're going to do that. Otherwise, wave it, fair catch it, whatever. Uh, but good Lord, that was almost a disaster. So awareness, be better. Um, I don't know. I love Devin Bell. I'm still going to see. I was going to go C plus uh, <laughs> just because of how good Devin Bale was. And like, there's not a ton to evaluate. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Hard to go higher than a, than, than that. Given how, how the, the kicking it's like outside of the missed field goal, they were fine, but it's like, we've said that like six weeks in a row. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly, man. Just continues to happen over and over. So there you have it. We did it. There's the grades. I hope, uh, I hope, you know, midterms are coming up, guys. Y'all better, uh, y'all better. I guess we already did our midterm grades and all that, but uh, it's almost holiday season. Man, man, there's nothing worse in college than when the holidays are coming up and you're behind on your studies. And you yeah. know, you're like, crap, I got, I've been postponing all this stuff. Um, obviously, the Razorbacks don't actually have to do that because we're not actually uh, their teachers. But uh, 
I don't know, man. I, I think uh, this was a, this was a disappointing performance, man. Overall, and the report card reflects that. Yeah, um, a setback, man. Uh, you know, it, yeah. it's and it's not just about the uh, you know the win and the the national perception, and everything like that. It's just, damn it, like every time they have a cool moment, like they did against Tennessee, and you think, all right. This is going to be the one that propels them. Like they're done with the BS. They're finally taking a step forward or just improving over the course of a season like normal teams do. Uh, then they just do something like this, man, over and over. Um, and for it to happen at home and you get your butt kicked, it's just uh, it's deflating. It deflates the balloon. Absolutely. Um, and they're going to have to figure it out, man, because uh, they historically just don't play very well in Starkville. You got the cowbells down there. Um, and that's a team that, really has nothing to lose at this point. There's a lot of pressure on Arkansas, honestly. Like you can't go down there and and lay an egg in this game. That's going to be a horrible look and Mississippi State's like screw it man, like we're already kind of eliminated from a bowl. We're just trying to to get better. We're playing with house money. Um they'll be all in on this opportunity against Arkansas. And uh the Hogs are going to have to go down there and play because Mississippi State's improving every week and they're getting closer and closer and it, it feels like eventually they're going to pick somebody off. It cannot be you. Otherwise, it's going to get nasty with some of this stuff that we have to do next weekend, brother. Those are the kind of games that, you know, like usually spell. It's really hard to come back from that. Like, yeah. obviously, in the season, Arkansas would be falling to four and four. You'd, you'd start to really question if they're going to a bowl game at that point. But also just big picture nationally. Uh, you rarely see coaches lose games like that and then steady the ship. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like usually, especially when you've lost some of the games that uh, that Arkansas has lost under its current head coach. Um, and so, yeah, I think this is. We say it every week. Is this the biggest game of the Sam Pittman tenure? <laughs> I think this is the biggest game of the Sam Pittman tenure. Frankly, I don't. I mean, here we are back yeah. in it, back in it, where the big picture standing of the program is back under question. Yeah, uh, and it sucks, man. Nobody wants to be here, and uh, so go out there and just play well. Just don't suck in Starkville. That's all. That's all it takes. Yeah, that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be the name of our pregame show. The title: Don't suck in Starkville. So, everybody, uh, everybody, look forward to that. But we're gonna be talking about it plenty. Uh, make sure you tune in to everything we got going on inside Arkansas Live every day at noon. Um, we do that thing. So the chat, the phone lines are open. You can get in there and get your thoughts out. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Inside Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Find us in the podcast feeds, pie of that nature, Apple, Spotify, wherever. Check out the written content, InsideArkansas.com. We got a lot going on. Uh, basketball is coming up. They got that exhibition on Friday. We're really excited about that, and we're going to be uh, hitting you with all the coverage. So, for Andrew Ellis, it's been Curtis Wilgerson with Inside Arkansas and the Pod of That Nature. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. We'll see you next time.